Welcome to my channel. If you like my videos, then kindly subscribe, like, and watch. Thank you. Welcome back. Problem one dash five. So the statement of problem is determine the resultant internal loading in the beam at cross section through point D and E. Point E is just to the right of the three kips load. So you can see this is a beam and there is loading. This is a uniformly increasing load from A to B and then there is a concentrated load at point E. So you have been asked to find out the internal loading at C and at E. So let's start with the solution. For Initially we will find out the reaction force for this segment AB. So we will draw the free body diagram for uh, section AB. Clear? So for support reaction, for support reaction, AB, we will draw the free body diagram for AB. So let me draw the free body diagram. So let this is the beam from A to B. This is point A and this is point B. You can see this beam is composed of two members that A, B and B say they are pinned together at point B. So if I draw the free body diagram of A, B, so at point A there is a reaction force that is vertical. I will draw it. This is the vertical force. The direction will be upward. Uh, this is the reaction force. The direction is upward. And at point B, we will have two forces. One is vertical force there. And the second one will be the horizontal force. Let this is AY a vertical this is by this is bx now you can see from a to b there is a uniformly increasing load i will show it as dotted line because uh, we will convert it into a point load so this is 1.5 kips per foot so if you want to uh, convert it into concentrated load so the load will be acting at let this is the acting point of the load so this load will be equal to half of since it it is triangular so it will be half of 1.5 into the total length which is 6 feet this length is 6 feet clear so this load is equal to 9 kips uh, sorry, not this is 6 feet, this is 12 feet. Uh, so clear it. This is 12 feet. Let me correct it. This is 12 feet. And again, this distance will be also 12. So this load will be equal to 9 kips. Now, the question is where this concentrated load will act. So, it will act at a distance of from this side, it will be equal to L by 3 and from this side, from lower side, or this is denser side and this is lower denser side. So, from here, it will be 2 L by 3 clear and length is equal to 12 feet so let's start finding this reaction force so for finding reaction force uh, force i will find the sum of all movement about point b is equal to zero and taking counterclockwise movement as positive so you can see here at point b there is a force a y which is producing a clockwise movement so it will be equal to minus a y and the perpendicular distance will be equal to 12 feet the second force which is producing movement is this con uh, the concentrated uh, load which is equal to 9 kips. So it will be producing counterclockwise. So I will write it plus sign. So 9 into perpendicular distance is L by 3. Now L is 12. 
so 12 by 3 is equal to 4 so it will be 9 into 4 where sum must be equal to 0 so from here I can get the value of a y and a y will be equal to 3 kips now moving further we will find this horizontal force and vertical force b y so i will uh, apply the condition of equilibrium that sum of all forces along x direction must be equal to zero and in this direction the force will be positive so you can see only horizontal force is bx and there is no other force so bx will be equal to in short bx will be equal to zero for finding this vertical force sum of all forces along y direction is equal to zero and upward force is taken as positive so you can see there is one force a y the second force is this concentrated load and third force is b y their sum must be equal to zero so b y is upward so b y plus a y is also upward so it is three kips so i will write three minus this 9 kips loads which is acting downward their sum must be equal to 0 so implies that by is equal to 6 kips so this is the internal reactions for member a b now i will move toward finding the internal loading at point d and at point e so we will start for point d i will write it uh, over here so for point D or point D if you want to find the uh, internal loading at point D so you have to cut this beam so when you cut this beam you have to draw the free body diagram so let this is uh, the beam this is point A where this AY is acting clear and this AY is equal to 3 kips this is point A and this is point D so when you cut the sec beam at this point uh, so there will be definitely a shear force that is acting downward and this shear force will be equal to VD there will be horizontal normal force this is, that is equal to ND and there will be a couple or movement at point D this is MD the length from A to D is 6 feet so this length is equal to 6 feet also you can see from A to D there will be a uniformly increasing load and you have to convert that load into point load so what will you do is that you will have 1.5 kips 1.5 kips and since it is triangular so it, the area will be equal to 1 over 2 into 1.5 into 6 which will give you 2.35 kips so this uniformly increasing load is converted into concentrated load and it will act on the beam and it will be L by 3 which is 6 by 3 with 2 so it will be 2 feet from the denser side and the remaining is the 4 feet now we will apply equilibrium condition in order to find this internal loading so let's let move toward finding the load so first equation we will apply that sum of all force along x direction is equal to 0 and in this direction the force will be positive so from here free body diagram you can see the only force is horizontal is nd and there is no other force so sum of all the force along horizontal direction is equal to 0 so nd is equal to 0 now second we will apply the equation condition of equilibrium that sum of all forces along y direction is equal to 0 and upward force is taken as positive so there is one force which is acting upward is 3 kips so 3 the other force is minus 2.35 clear uh, minus 2 point it is 2.25 sorry this 2.25 and so correct it 
clear and the third force is vd which is acting downward so minus vd is equal to zero so when you calculate it so vd will be equal to 0 0.750 kips now we will find this moment so what we will do is that we will take the sum of all moments about point d is equal to 0 and counterclockwise moment is positive so you can see at point d this is point d so at point d there is external moment which is counterclockwise so it is md about point d the one force that is producing moment is 3 kips and this is equal to 3 into perpendicular distance is 6 and it is producing clockwise direction so i it, i will write it minus 3 into 6 the second force which is producing moment is this 2.25 and the perpendicular distance is 2 feet clear so it is also producing counterclockwise so it will be positive so 2.25 into perpendicular distance is 2 is their sum is equal to 0 so implies that we will get moment about point D is equal to 13.5 kips into feet so this is the internal loading at point D this one the normal force is 0 the shear force is this and moment is this now in second part it is given to find out the uh, internal loading at point E clear so we will draw the free by diagram of this uh, portion E okay so let's move uh, you can see that uh, for finding this uh, loading at point E I will take this member BC clear and we will draw the free wire diagram so let me draw the free wire diagram for point E for point E I will draw the beam okay so you can see here at point B there is a vertical force which is 6 kip so I will write six kip over here this is vertical force and this is six this is point b this is six kips at point e which is four feet away from point b there is a load of three kip clear so this is point e where a load of this is point E here where a load of uh, sorry okay there is a point E where a load of 3 kips is given clear and the distance between B and E is 4 feet so when you cut the beam over here from B to C here so there will be a shear force and again there will be a there will be a shear force that will be acting downward and this shear force is VE there will be a normal force that is equal to NE and there will be a movement reaction movement at point E so this is free by diagram of member BE clear now we will apply the equilibrium condition so first equilibrium condition it's very easy now first equilibrium condition the sum of all forces along x direction is equal to 0 and only horizontal force is ne so ne will be equal to 0 the second equilibrium condition that sum of all forces along y direction is equal to 0 and upward force is taken as positive so two forces acting uh, three forces acting vertically 6 3 and ve so 6 minus 3 minus ve okay one more thing is that when you have taken this 
BE force vertical in this member. So here in BE, the, this vertical force will be downward. So I have to correct it. This vertical force is downward. It is not upward. It is downward. Or you can also show it over here. This is the same force. Clear? So this minus 6, minus 3, minus VE, their sum is equal to 0. So VE will be equal to minus 9 kips. Now you can see that V here I have drawn VE downward. So VE is also negative. So it means that our assumed direction is correct one. Now we will apply this moment about point E. So sum of all moment about point E is equal to 0 and counterclockwise moment is taken as positive. So about point E, one moment is ME, which is reaction moment and that is counterclockwise. So it will be ME. The second force, the force which is producing moment and that will be counterclockwise is this 6 kips. So 6 into 4 plus 6 into 4. And this force is passing through point E. So th this is 3 kips is not producing any, any moment. So it will be equal to 0. So from here we can get moment about point E is equal to minus 24 kips into feet. Here you can see we have the value of moment is minus 24 kips. So and we have assumed the M moment counterclockwise. So it means our assumed direction was wrong. So you have to take the moment as clockwise direction. So this was all about uh, this problem. These three loadings. Uh, the first one is this one. The second one is this one. And the third one is this one. These are the internal loadings for point E. While this above three are this one, this one. And this one are for the internal loading at point D. I hope you have now a clear understanding about such type of problems. Thank you.